I'm Sarah Erstuck, and the name is spelled S-A-R-A, and last name is A-I-E-R-S-T-U-C-K. I'm a nurse practitioner. I'm director of health services at Hampshire. Awesome. All right. So what sorts of barrier methods exist for women who have sex with women? Well, um, there are dental dams, and dental dams are pieces of latex, so usually about five inch square. Um, there are condoms, so you can take a condom and just cut it up the middle and stretch it out and use it just like a dental dam. Um, got my notes. There are, oh, there are gloves. Um, you know, just the same kind of gloves that we use in the medical field, um, latex, non-latex, silicone gloves. What is your role at Health Services? So I'm a nurse practitioner and I see, I see patients, um, see all kinds of patients for all kinds of things. Um, I'm a family practice nurse practitioner and I'm also the director of health services, which means I'm um, in charge of the mental health services, the medical end of it. Um, I also have um, some supervisory role with the community health collaborative. Awesome. What testing options are available at health services? So at Health Services itself, right in Health Services, we do um, just pregnancy testing and um, urine analysis, but we can do tests and send out for a variety of things. Uh, we can do, for STIs, we can do HIV testing. Um, right now we're doing a blood test for HIV. It's, um, we can have a result available within one to two days. We are doing, uh, we can do herpes testing, chlamydia, gonorrhea, um, syphilis, pretty much everything. <laughs> what SCDs uh, or SCIs are more prevalent among lesbians and queer women? Well, there's not a lot of research on that, as in most things that you know, we're talking about in terms of lesbian health. Um, however, there is documented research showing increased incidence of uh, bacterial vaginosis, or BV. And um, that's, do you know that, or should I tell? We should tell. Yeah, should tell it is. Okay. Um, so that's uh, vaginal. It's not really an infection, but it's just an overgrowth of bacteria. So in the vagina, the healthy vagina has a lot of these bacteria called lactobacillus, and they keep everything in a good balance. And when those are depleted, for whatever reason, these other bacteria will overgrow, and they can cause um, a strong odor and sometimes a heavy discharge. Occasionally, or a lot of times, symptoms just like a yeast infection, like burning, itching, burning on urination. And so, do we, okay, and the only way to know if you have that or not is to um, do testing. And what's the test like that for? Or what, what is, is what is the test for that like? <laughs> do you mean what is it like for the patient to have the test or? How yeah, like what's the process uh, for testing for bacterial vaginosis? Well, there's different ways of doing it. Um, you can have just like a regular exam in like a um, gynecological exam where you have the speculum and take the swab. but. Um, I, I often will just have um, students just put the swab in their own vagina. You know, if it's just if that's the only thing we're worried about, I would just put it in and kind of rub it around a little bit. It just has to go in about that much. So it's not really very invasive and it's pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. And um, you can often tell right in the office because the pH is often high. Mm -hmm. And so. Could a yeast infection be mistaken for an STD? Could a yeast infection be mistaken for an STD? Um, Sure. Yeah, most STDs don't have just one set of symptoms. So the symptoms of a yeast infection are things like burning on urination or itching or abnormal vaginal discharge. And that can be, that can indicate a lot of different things. So a lot of times people just say, you know, I'm having some kind of a problem down there. They don't really know what it is. And so we just try to, it's like detective work, trying to figure out what it could be and do some testing. How can you tell if your partner has an STD? That's hard. Um, there could be some symptoms that she's complaining about. Maybe you know, she says it burns when I pee or it's kind of itching. Um, that could be an STD, but again, it could be something that's not an STD. Um, the best way to do, the best thing to do if your partner, if you think your partner might have an STD or you're concerned is just to go together and be tested. I um, agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because then, then you know for sure. And I think if you feel uncomfortable about that, you know, just going in and be tested yourself and then encouraging them to be tested too is good. And using barrier methods. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> if you're yeah. having sex with them. Absolutely. What if a partner doesn't want to use barrier methods? Are there other ways to protect myself from STDs? Well, you know, I looked at that question ahead of time and I was thinking about it. 
I think, you know, if you have a partner who doesn't want to use barrier methods, I would kind of wonder about whether or not you definitely, you know, if you want to be engaged in sexual activity with that person, because it might be that it's somebody you don't want to be with. So I guess that's the question I would first ask would be, you know, do you really want to? And then if, if you do, then you might want to consider things like um, masturbation, mutual masturbation, or maybe fingering, things that would have a lower risk than some other methods like sharing sex toys or things like that, or oral sex. Okay, um, and okay, so then I'm just gonna pretend, okay. I, I want to be like, can I ask you like uh, some questions that you should ask your doctor if you think Sure. Uh, you have an STD? I know I didn't have it on the sheet. But no, it's fine. I, I probably do it. better without the questions on the sheet. <laughs> I think probably. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what are some questions you think that people should be asking their doctors if they suspect that they might have an STD? Questions people should be asking their doctors. Um, it's funny, I always think about what the doctor should be asking the patient. So, let me think. I mean, I think that they, there should be a conversation about um, between the two people, the student or the patient and the healthcare provider, about um, partners, you know, types of sexual activities. You know, is it, has it been anal sex? Has it been fingering? Has it been oral sex? Has it been vaginal penetration? Um, past history, you know, other partners they may have had. Certainly symptoms, anything that's bothering them. I mean, could be pain, it could be itching, it could be nothing. Um, they should also just, if there's something lingering, a lot of times people will come in and they won't really want to say what's bothering them, and it's hard to know sometimes. So um, if they have something in their mind, they should just say it instead of wondering. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, I really appreciate you coming. My yeah. pleasure. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Oh, yay. Okay, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, 